cataractcoach.com. Iowa calculations, in particular axial length measurements in eyes with very dense or opaque cataracts. So look at this patient here. You put him on the autorefractor. We'll get a topography, a little bit of a ptosis there. But the machine's unable to read a lot of the things. Can't measure inside the eye. Can't measure the refraction. There's no AR, no autorefraction. Same with the other eyes. This patient has bilateral, really dense, opaque cataracts. So when you go to do his measurements or biometry, take a look here. We're able to do a lot of it, except it's really hard for the machine to piece together an axial length for the right eye. So what do you do here? And everything else looks okay. So because you can't get that for the right eye, there are no calculations. There's no axial length. The left eye, you have something. The patient doesn't have any old glasses to reference, so you don't know if there's a history of anisometropia. So before you go to your ultrasound A scan, wait till the patient is dilated. Now look, dilated patient, and now the machine's able to get better readings. Now there's somewhat of an autorefraction here, maybe a little bit on the autorefraction here, but obviously with a dilated pupil, it's a lot easier. Remember too, our optical coherence biometry this is also based on light. So when the pupil is bigger, it lets in more light, and look, now we can get an axial length here. Now, I wish the tech had done both eyes again dilated, just for reference, but it's okay. The previous one was very accurate. So now you can look at before dilation and after dilation. Let's put it up this way. Pardon that. There we go. So on, the, on this side, you've got the right eye now post dilation. The left eye here, pre-dilation, and both are similar axial lengths, a little bit longer on this side, but I'm pretty confident of that. So in a tough eye like this, where you have a very dense cataract, remember, especially if the patient has cortical spokes in the center or posterior subcapsule in the center, remember, dilate the patient and then repeat the biometry. You may be surprised. All right. Let's look at another patient with a very, very dense cataract. So an absolutely white, brunescent cataract in the right eye and unable to get an axial length measurement. So if we look at our biometry printout here, here's the machine. You see, unable to read the axial length in the right eye. The left eye, able to get it, but it's eh, not the hottest data. Everything else looks reasonable. Again, of course, can't measure retina thickness, barely is able to get some lens thickness, but it looks pretty reasonable. Now in this eye, even though we dilated the patient up, still unable to get any lens measurements, no axial length measurements, even despite dilation, such a dense cataract. So we do have one axial length measurement here, 2707 for the left eye, and some sort of calculations, but we don't have it for the other eye. So we're gonna do an A scan. So I do the A scan myself. And now a couple things. First, remember I always measure both eyes. If I already have an axial length here, why am I remeasuring? Well, to make sure my A scan is giving me about the same measurement as I got from the optical. So I know I'm doing a good technique because 2707 for the left eye and my A scan, I got 2705, so I'm pretty happy there. Now I measured the right eye and I got a shorter axial length, 26.69. And in my, my notations here, that double check means I double checked it. I'm sure of it. So I measured myself, and I'm sure that the right eye is shorter slightly than the left eye. Now, about 0.3 millimeters different in axial length is maybe close to a diopter in difference. So maybe this patient is obviously myopic. You can see by the lens power. But maybe the left eye is about a diopter more myopic than the right. So let's look at the lens calcs. Now we'll go to the lens calculations here. So I use those axial lengths. There you go, that's the axial length from the A scan, from the ultrasound, uh, the AC, ultrasound here, A scan. This is the one from the optical. So I put that in there, I'm using the our free IOLcalc.com. You gotta know about this already, come on. IOLcalc.com, the best. So do our calculations. Now, the left eye, I agree, is gonna be a nine diopter lens. This is with the Lattice Super Formula AI, nine diopters. You can see that nine diopters also is a pretty good choice from, from Barrett or from Hill or from Hagus, or from even Holiday, or longer axial length, SRKT, all reasonable. We just don't use the Hoffer one, right? So looking at this here, what are we gonna decide to do? 
So do we believe the anisometropia or not? Maybe I measured it wrong. What if the eyes were identical? So what lens would you implant? Well, in the left eye, I think it's pretty straightforward. We do probably the nine diopter lens to aim for Plano, which is the patient's desire. For this eye, what would you do? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I implanted something a little different than you may expect. Here's what I implanted. In the right eye, a 10 and a half. In the left eye, a nine. So 10 and a half on the right eye should give about Plano. If I measured the, a, the axial length long, and it really is long like the other, let's say the eyes were actually identical, and I put in too high of a lens, a 10 and a half, well, what would the patient end up being? You know what, about a minus one post-op, maybe one and a quarter, which is pretty reasonable. And then you'd end, this side, if, let's say my A scan is, uh, is measurement's wrong. Let's say both eyes are actually identical. And if I put the 10 and a half in, then this patient will end up minus one or one and a quarter on this side, plain on this side, a really nice outcome. If, however, I am correct, then I get the same thing in both eyes, about minus a quarter-ish post-op in each eye, and it's exactly what we got. So that's kind of my thinking. For these dense cataracts, you can't get an axial length. Here's how to do with ultrasound, and these are all my little secret pearls. All right, another similar case. The patient has such dense cataracts that both eyes are unable to get axial length measurements. Sometimes it's a, com a combination of the patient having a dense nuclear cataract that's very opaque or a white cataract, or as you've seen, extensive posterior subcapsular cataract. But there's a catch in this patient. And the catch is, the patient has a history of dense amblyopia in the right eye and normal vision in the left eye. There was a history 10 years ago of some anisometropia, where this eye was myopic, and saw very well. This eye was a little on the hyperopic side to emetropic side and didn't see well. So his best predictor vision historically has been 2020 left eye 10 years ago and 20 out of 200 right eye. Now the rest of the biometry is pretty similar. Cornea, AC depth, lens thickness, even the K's are pretty similar between the two eyes. But again, unable to measure this. So this was on the day he presented for consultation. So we dilated him up. And now look, 30 minutes later, same date, now the machine gives us somewhat of a reading here, but making it from a composite reading. Hmm, okay. Now if you go back to the original, I actually did the patient's A scan myself. And that's my own writing. I know the A scan on the actual on the right is 2512, on the left 2643, and I double checked it myself. So now for the calculations, do I use 2654, which is the um, combination or do I use my hand measure 2643? Well, you can also do things like intraoperative aberrometry or leave the patient a fake it, do the refraction, auto refraction, then do it back to the OR, do it on the OR table, you get the idea. But let's just go through this. So I trusted my measurements. I put in a 20.0 diopter lens for a goal of minus two, and by golly, we got the exact outcome we wanted. So now, patient comes back, and now, the cataract in the right eye is so bad, he just came back recently, this eye, the cataract is so bad that he needs to have the cataract surgery so the retina doctor can examine him. Now the left eye, interestingly, now that the machine can read it accurately and not have to use a composite method, it's 26.40 because this eye is already pseudophagic. That should be pseudophagic. 2640, and remember I got 2643, so pretty good. Now again, I still don't have this eye, so I do the A scan again, and in this eye, I get, again, 25.12, very consistent. So we do our calculations here, 25.12, we use 26.40. Notice that to calculate this, I just copy for the left eye the ACD from the right eye. And our goal, minus two in both eyes. In this one, I already told you, we put in a 20 and we got minus two. So in this one, we should put in a 23 and a half, and that should also give us about minus two. Notice how the actual result that we get came with Post-op of minus two is not exactly what was predicted, and that's okay. And so we'll apply that same kind of fudge factor to the other eye. So the right eye we're gonna do, and we'll do a 23.5, again, for our post-op goal of minus two. So important teaching points here, what do you do when patients have a very dense cataract and you're unable to get the axial length? And again, we're doing all these calculations here using the lattice to perform with AI on iowacalc.com. Thanks for watching.